Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be working on the 2015 AP Calculus AB Free Response question number 6. Now this was the final question of the 2015 AP exam. So pretty much when students got this question they were pretty much tired. But also this was the most difficult free response question in my opinion because of part B and C which required a lot of work. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to notice is the fact that your equation already starts off with a dy over dx. When that happens, understand that that's what we call a differential equation. So when you see this and you see another equation, y cubed minus xy equals 2, you're probably going to have to use those two equations together at some point. This is the stuff you want to think about when you get stuck on a question like this. So let's go ahead and get started. It says, consider the curve given by the equation y cubed minus xy equals 2. It can be shown that dy over dx equals to that equation. It says, write an equation for the line tangent to the curve at the point negative 1, 1. Keyword, line tangent. When I see that, that's my favorite thing because I know that for part A, all I have to do is y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. Where your y1, your x1 are your coordinates negative 1, 1. The only thing that we're missing is a slope. We're missing m. Well, how do we find m? m is found by the derivative in calculus. Well, what's our derivative? It's given to us. Our derivative is dy over dx equals to y over 3y squared minus x. So we know, what you'll notice is there's an x and a y, and those are the two coordinates that I'm going to plug in. So when we plug it in, you're going to get dy over dx is equal to 1 over 3 times 1 squared minus minus 1. Don't forget that. That's a, lot of mis that's a mistake that a lot of students will probably make. This will be 1 over 1 squared times 3, 3 plus 1, which is going to simplify to 1 fourth. That is our slope. So we're going to take this 1 fourth and we're going to plug it into here. So that my final answer is going to be this. y minus 1 equals to 1 fourth x minus minus 1. And then simplifying things, you could possibly make it y equals to 1 fourth x plus 1 plus 1. And that right there is our tangent line. Okay? That's not my best one, but there we go. So tangent line problem, think of that anytime you hear it. Write this equation out, x1, y1, figure them out. They'll probably be given to you. M, find your derivative. If your derivative is given to you, just plug it in and that's it. Okay, moving on to part B. By the way, part A was worth two points, okay? Part B says, find the coordinates of all points on the curve at which the line tangent to the curve at the point is vertical. And you're going to sit there and go, okay, line tangent to the curve is vertical. Find all the coordinates. Well, the one thing you notice is the keyword is vertical. Tangent line. Tangent line, I think of first derivative. Vertical, how do I find vertical tangent lines? So that's pretty much what they're asking us. Vertical tangent lines. You find vertical tangent lines by setting your denominator of your derivative equal to zero. Once again, to find vertical tangent lines, set the denominator of your derivative equal to zero. What this means is this. 3y squared minus x equals to zero. So this is one of those questions that if you didn't know how to do that, there was no way you're going to get that right. But if you did, at least you'd be able to set that up. Now the next thing is once you have this, this is one point. Because knowing that a vertical tangent line is found by setting the bottom equal to zero, that's a point. Now in case they ask you for a horizontal tangent line, set the numerator of your derivative equal to zero. Okay? So then our next thing is, well, let's go ahead and find this coordinate. I don't know what to do because I have a y square, I have an x. What am I going to do? This is the part where you go, okay, well, let's look at the equation that they gave us in the beginning y cubed minus xy equals to 2. How can I somehow use these two equations to figure out an equ to figure out a solution? Well, if this is going to be the line tangent, what if I were to solve for a variable in here and plug it into here? And some of you are wondering, well, why don't I try doing that for this one as well? Well, the reason why you couldn't do that for the right one is because there's not a, there's not a variable that I can get by itself that's going to be easy. This is the problem when um, this is like a type of problem that you dealt with in algebra one or algebra two when you were working with systems of equation, which equation is easier to solve for that you can substitute into the other one? I would say it's this one. So I'm going to add x, add x, and I'm going to get x is equal to three y squared. Meaning, anytime I see an, an x, I'm going to plug in three y squared. 
meaning I'm going to take this and plug it into here, which is going to look like this, y cubed minus parentheses um, 3y squared times y equals to 2. And then simplifying it, I'm going to get y cubed minus y squared times y, 3y squared equals to 2. Combine like terms, there's a 1 minus 2, that's negative, this is a cube, I'm sorry, negative 2y cubed equals to 2. Divide by 2, y cubed is equal to negative 1. Last thing, cube root of y cubed and negative 1, you're going to get y is equal to negative 1. That is my y coordinate, and the fact that I found that gives me one point. Now, the next thing is, well, how am I going to figure out what the x is? Well, don't forget, this is like a systems of equation. Take this and plug it into here. So that means that you're going to get x is equal to 3, negative 1 squared, which should give you a value of x is equal to 3. So our coordinate for where our tangent line to the curve is vertical is going to be at 3, comma, negative 1. And this is worth three points. How difficult is this question? Very. This is one of the most difficult questions on the free response, in my opinion. Now, once again, how did I even know how to do this? Well, the first thing for part B, the fact that it said vertical tangent line. Vertical tangent line is found by setting the denominator of your derivative equal to zero, which is what we did right here. Problem is, we were stuck. How am I going to solve for this? Well, let's look at the other equation that was given to me. I wrote it over here. Well, because there's two equations, and this is going to be a vertical tangent line for this equation, let's think about substituting things into one of the equations. Well, I'm going to get one of the equations by itself, which is easier to get this one. So I add x, add x. That's why I have x equals 3y squared. And I plugged it in, and just a little bit of algebra to solve it. Okay? And then I found the coordinate, which ended up giving me the final three points of that part of the question. So as of right now, we've received five out of the nine points in part A and part B. So if there's one thing you want to take out of from part B, vertical tangent lines is found by setting the denominator equal to zero, and horizontal tangent lines is found by setting the numerator of your derivative equal to zero, in case you're asked that, which I really think you might be. Part C. Part C says evaluate d squared y over dx squared. That right there is second derivative. Well, the good thing is we already have the first derivative, and my first derivative is a quotient meaning I'm gonna have to apply the quotient rule. Also, they want me to find, evaluate this at the point x equals negative one and y equals one, meaning that once I find my second derivative, I'm gonna plug this in. Now, this is the thing you have to ask yourself. When I find this second derivative, there's a y and the x. This is implicit, implicit differentiation, meaning that every time I find a derivative of y, I'm gonna have to add a dy over dx. Things you wanna ask yourself as you're attempting these problems. So when I find this derivative, I'm gonna do this. So I'm going to write out the equation, and this is going to look like a monster when we're working this out. So dy over dx is equal to y over 3y squared. I'm just rewriting the question. Now I'm going to attempt my solution. Now remember, when you find this derivative for part c, it's going to be a quotient rule. How do I know it's a fraction? And this is going to be my answer. Low d high, derivative of the high is 1, but because it's y, don't forget I have to add 1 dy over dx. So low d high, derivative of the high, minus the high times the derivative of the low. When I figure out the derivative of the low, the derivative of 3y squared is 6y, but because it's y, don't forget dy over dx. Derivative of x is minus 1. All over low squared, which is 3y squared minus x squared. So once again, low d high, derivative of the high is 1, add dy dx because it's y, minus high, derivative of the low, derivative of 3y squared is 6y, but because it's y, add dy over dx, minus derivative of x, which is 1, over low squared. Now your next step when you get to this point is, a lot of people will try simplifying, but there's no reason to simplify. We already know that this is equal to the second derivative. And what they're asking us to do was evaluate at x equals negative 1 and 1. So why don't we just go ahead and plug it into all the y's and x's. So now when we plug it into all the y's and x's, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get 3 times 1 squared minus minus 1. Please do not forget that. That's where a lot of students are going to make mistakes. 
and then derivative of the y. And you're like, wait, what? First derivative, how am I going to find that? Don't forget, they're going to give you that. They gave you that. So plug in negative 1, comma 1, negative 1, comma 1 into this equation. Now, in case you forgot, that was the same exact thing that we did in part A. Okay? In part A, when we found the, la ta the line tangent, we plugged the negative 1, comma 1 into this equation. But I'll plug it in again. I'm going to get 1 over 3, 1 squared, minus, minus 1, so plus 1. So it gave me a value of 1 fourth. So anytime I want to find a derivative at negative 1, comma 1, I'm going to plug in 1 fourth. So example right here. Plug in 1 fourth, minus, once again, keep plugging everything in, 1 times 6 times 1 times 1 fourth minus 1 all over and it looks like a mess like I told you this is one that you have to be very careful so once you find your derivative plug in the values 3 times 1 squared minus minus 1 squared okay now when I work everything out when I work everything out this is what I'm gonna get I'm gonna get 1 squared 1 times 3 3 this is going to be a positive 1, so 3 plus 1, 4. Times 1 fourth minus, and then here, 6 times 4, etc. Simplify things, work it out. You're going to get an answer of 1 half. And then followed by all over the bottom squared. 1 squared, 1 times 3, 3, 3 plus 1, 4, 4 squared, 16. And then simplifying a couple more things. Simplifying this, this is going to end up all simplifying to pretty much 1 minus 1 half over 16. Now the one thing I'll do is 1 minus 1 half also is 1 half over 16. And because it's 1 over 1 half over 16, I'm going to put this over 16. I'm going to keep change flip. This is going to be 1 half times 1 over 16, which is going to be 1 over 32. And that is my answer. Okay? Was this complicated? Yes. The fact that you have to do all of the pre-algebra steps just to solve for my 1 over 32. This is my derivative, my second derivative at negative 1 comma 1. Now, just to let you guys know, if sometimes they might ask, is this concave up or concave down? Well, because remember, you're plugging second derivative, which is concavity, and you plugged in a point at negative 1, comma 1, and you got a positive value, that would be a concave up, just in case they ask you that question. So, you got two points for being able to determine the implicit differentiation, everything in purple. One point for being able to recognize that you would plug 1 fourth into every dy over dx. And the last thing is being able to get the last point was getting 1 over 32. Okay, so this was a difficult question. Try practicing it. Especially understand B when it asks you to find vertical tangent lines saying the bottom equals zero, horizontal tangent lines to the numerator equals zero of the derivative. And also, anytime you find a second derivative, if you have to find derivative of Y, make sure you add dy over dx. And what is this dy over dx? In the original equation when they gave it to you in the beginning. Okay? So, thank you guys for watching. I hope it helped and let me know how it went. Good luck.